Are murderers born or made? Professor Adrian Rain, an expert in criminology and psychiatry, claims the genetic basis for criminal behaviour is no longer up for debate. The real question is which genes predispose people to criminal behaviour. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. In this video, we're going to explore a genetic and neural explanation for criminal behaviour. And as we do so, we will consider research that has focused on APD, which stands for Antisocial Personality Disorder. This is characterised by impulsive, irresponsible and often criminal behaviour where individuals will be manipulative, deceitful and not care for other people's feelings. So first, let's explore genetics. What if I told you that the DNA you inherit from your parents could predispose you to criminal behaviour? That's the idea behind the genetic explanation. The DNA a person inherits from their parents may give them a predisposition to criminal behaviour. Enter the MAOA gene, dubbed the warrior gene for its link to aggression. The MAOA gene produces monoamine oxidase A. Well, what in the world is that? This is an enzyme that breaks down neurotransmitters, specifically serotonin, dopamine, and noradrenaline. Too much or too little of a neurotransmitter can affect our behavior, and not always for the better. So meet Jim. Jim has something different going on with the MAOA gene. His MAOA gene has low activity. It's known as MAOA-L. As a result, this means there is less MAOA in Jim's body, and that means there is less MAOA to break down those neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, and noradrenaline, which means there are more of these neurotransmitters in Jim's brain. So hold on, you might be thinking at this point, we were talking about genetics, but now we've been talking about the brain and neurotransmitters. What's going on? Good question, more on that to come. And okay, we understand what this MAOA gene does, but what's this got to do with criminal behaviour? Let's take a closer look at the research. In 1993, Brunner et al studied a rather unusual Dutch family. It became apparent that many of the males in this family, across several generations, and who lived in different parts of the country, had repeatedly committed acts of violent criminal behaviour. When these family members were studied, it was found that each of these violent family members had low MAOA activity, whereas the males in the family who had not committed any violent criminal behaviours did not carry this mutated gene. Okay, interesting so far, but this is mainly observational research. What about more experimental controlled research? Well, that's rather difficult to do because you cannot take a human being and deliberately disable their MAOA gene. That would be unethical. But apparently, they have done so in mice. And would you believe it, the term used for disabling the MAOA gene is known as knockout. Cross to left cheek. How appropriate for research into aggression. One study conducted research with mice with MAOA knockouts and found that they were highly aggressive compared to mice without the MAOA knockout. Now let's switch gears to a rather provocative study with human participants involving hot sauce. I feel like I'm gonna die! In this study, they wanted to investigate under what circumstances participants would pay money to cause physical pain to others who had taken money from them in a previous interaction. Participants could punish those they believe had taken money from them by using spicy sauce as their weapon of choice. How much hot sauce they gave to their opponent was the measure of their aggression. Ooh. I know, and it doesn't stop again. <laughs> what they found was that in the low provocation condition, where someone didn't take lots of money from them, there wasn't much difference in aggression between those with normal MAOA and those with low activity MAOA. However, in the high provocation condition, the intensity and frequency of aggression also increased, especially in those participants with the low activity MAOA gene. In other words, individuals with low MAOA activity will be more likely to react with aggression in response to provocation. Finally, in our discussion of genetics, there is a very important study to consider that you'll need to remember for the end of the video. Caspi et al in 2002 were interested in determining why some children who are maltreated, meaning they experience some form of abuse, grew up to develop antisocial behavior, whereas others 
did not. How do you study that? Well, they conducted a longitudinal study for more than 20 years where they followed over 1,000 male children from birth to adulthood. What they found was that maltreated children who also had low activity MAOA were more likely to develop antisocial problems. But be careful, notice what this research suggested. Is genetics causing criminal behavior? No, not on its own. Some children experience maltreatment and grow up not to be antisocial and aggressive. Other children have the low activity MAOA gene and grow up not to be antisocial and aggressive. But if a child has experienced maltreatment and has the low activity MAOA gene, they are much more likely to develop antisocial behavior problems related to crime. It's genetics plus the environment, it's nature and nurture. Caspi et al put it like this, genotypes can moderate children's sensitivity to environmental insults. Now we come to the neural explanation, which focuses on the nervous system and for the purposes of this video, specifically the brain and one part of the brain known as the prefrontal cortex. So here's Jim again. Hi Jim, this is Jim's brain. This area of his brain is the frontal lobe and in the frontal lobe is the prefrontal cortex. And Jim's got something abnormal going on with this part of his brain. So what's this got to do with criminal behavior? This brings us back to our friend Adrian Adrian Rain, that professor of criminology and psychiatry. He has spent his career studying the brains of the most dangerous criminals. In 1997, Adrian Rain conducted a study on murderers who during their trial pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. In one group were 41 participants from the state of California who had been charged with murder or manslaughter. Each of these offenders had their brain analyzed with a PET scan, which was then compared with the brain scans of a normal control group of 41 participants who were of similar age and profile. The results were striking. The murderer's brains showed a significant reduction in the activity of the prefrontal cortex compared with the control group. These results were very important because it potentially identified parts of the brain that may be behind criminal behavior. Well, why? What does this prefrontal cortex do? The prefrontal cortex is thought to be responsible for decision-making, impulse control, and regulating our emotions. In other words, if you had a less developed prefrontal cortex, you would find it harder to control your emotions, such as anger and rage, and you would have less self-control. You'd be more impulsive. What do you mean everyone? EVERYONE! And these are the key characteristics of someone likely to be violent. In addition to this reduced activity, in another study, Rain et al in 2000 found an 11% reduction in the size of the prefrontal cortex in people with antisocial personality disorder. The researchers suggested that this impairment specifically characterizes impulsively violent offenders, suggesting that the prefrontal cortex acts as an emergency brake on runaway emotions. However, Rain himself himself has pointed out a few limitations of this research. First, the findings from the research are correlational. They only show an association between the reduced activity in the prefrontal cortex and criminal behavior. They don't show causality. They don't show that the reduced activity in the prefrontal cortex is the cause of criminal behavior. It could be the other way around. The change in the structure of the brain and its activity could be the result of criminal behavior. Or, because because it's correlational, it could be that the abnormalities in the brains of criminals are signs of another variable, such as early abuse. Therefore, it could be argued that whilst this research helpfully identifies areas of the brain that may be involved, we should be cautious about explaining criminal behavior from a purely neural point of view and need to explore other factors too. So where are we? Is biology behind our violent behavior? Well, if it was, then according to the explanations we've explored, if someone has the low activity MAOA gene and has the reduced activity in the prefrontal cortex, then surely they would be the violent psychopathic criminal type. This brings us back to Jim, but Jim 
wasn't a fictional made up character. He's a real person. Here he is. This is Jim Fallon. He's a professor of psychiatry at the University of California, and he's also a psychopath. Yep, you heard that right. He has the MAOA gene with low activity. And as for his brain, well, it looks like this. He has the reduced activity in the prefrontal cortex. But is he a psychopathic serial killer? No. He's a respected professor. So why not? His explanation is that he was protected by a happy childhood. Uh, and the one thing that isn't there, the one ingredient, is, is I was never abused and I had a wonderful childhood that apparently protected me in some way from this kind of funky biology. This brings us back to that very interesting study we explored earlier by Caspi et al in 2002. Do you remember what they found? If a child had the low activity MAOA gene, they are much more likely to develop antisocial behavior problems if they also had experienced maltreatment. It's biology plus the environment. It's nature and nurture. And that brings us to our first criticism of the genetic and neural explanations, that it's not just biology, it's nature and nurture. Secondly, the genetic and neural explanation have been criticized for being deterministic. This is because the theory states that the cause of criminal behavior is because of uncontrollable inborn biological factors. A person has the MAOA gene or the reduced activity of the prefrontal cortex. One of the problems with arguing that biology is the cause is that it can lead people to blame their biology for their behavior. In this case, if someone committed a crime, they could argue that it's not their fault. It's not their responsibility because they can't do anything about their genetics. And yes, while sometimes in extreme cases mitigating circumstances are taken into account, the judge still says you are responsible for your actions and so you will bear the consequences. In other words, a purely deterministic view is at odds with the justice system and society's understanding of responsibility. Thirdly and finally, one way these explanations have been criticised is because if they are taken on their own, if it's just genetics and brain structure, then this can be very socially sensitive. Psychological research can be used for human good, but that same research can potentially be applied in ways that can cause harm. This means that some research is sensitive. It's socially sensitive because it has the potential to harm others. How does this apply to biological explanations of crime? Imagine you are someone who hasn't committed a crime, but you have been identified as having brain abnormalities with your prefrontal cortex. Could this mean that whether you commit a criminal behavior is now inevitable? And if there is a criminal gene, should these people be identified before they've even committed a crime? Imagine being labeled as a potential criminal before you even act. So next, we need to explore personality, the criminal personality. This guy proposed that there are certain personality traits that makes it more likely that you'll be a criminal. And I'm gonna give you a questionnaire to find out if you have them. To watch that video, you can click on the screen now. And for more resources related to psychology, Ecology, check out the Bear It In Mind website linked below. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.